The larger your tax refund is, the more money you get to keep and put straight into your bank account. But a lot of people have no idea how to maximize their refunds and therefore they end up leaving a ton of money on the table each and every year. If you don't wanna give more money to the IRS than you have to, and if you'd rather keep more of your cash instead, then keep watching today's video. I'm gonna break down the top 10 tax tips that you can use to maximize your tax refunds. So make sure you stay all the way until the end of this video because not knowing any of these tips could cause you to miss out on a lot of cold, hard cash. But before we get started, don't forget to sign up for the Tax-Free Wealth Event Challenge. It will be taking place October 30th through November 3rd. During this challenge, I'll explain powerful tax strategies that I don't cover on my YouTube, and you'll have the opportunity to speak to me directly about your tax situation. You can find a link in the description by signing up below. Okay, let's dive into this video. All right, guys, what are tax refunds? As a reminder, tax refunds are refunds that are given by the IRS to people who tax withholdings exceed their actual tax liabilities for the year. Every year, hundreds of millions of Americans qualify for tax refunds. And generally speaking, the lower you can reduce your actual tax liabilities, the higher your refund will be. A wide variety of tax deductions and credits can help you to lower your tax burden and therefore potentially help you to boost your refund. Here are 10 of the absolute best tax deductions and credits to boost your tax refund and keep more of your hard earned money. Number one is the mortgage interest deduction. Roughly 42% of American households have mortgages. This translates to about 51.5 million households. If you have a mortgage, then in most cases, you will be able to use the mortgage interest deduction. The mortgage interest deduction is available to taxpayers who choose to itemize their deductions. This deduction allows you to deduct mortgage interest you paid during the tax year on your first $750,000 worth of principal for joint filers or $375,000 for single filers for either your first or your second home. The $750,000 limit was added in the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, and it is scheduled to revert to $1 in 2025. This means you'll be able to deduct even more mortgage interest in the coming years. Number two is the home office deduction. Ever since the pandemic started, more people than ever have been working from home. In fact, currently 41% of the workforce is working from home at least some of the time. If you work from home, then you might be eligible for the home office deduction. The home office deduction allows you to deduct certain expenses associated with using a space that's strictly used for business in your home. Now, there are a number of rules for the home office deduction. For example, the home office deduction is generally not available to employees. So if you're trying to take this deduction, you need to own a business. Second, you must use the home office exclusively and regularly for business. There are several different ways of calculating the home office deduction, but it is common for this deduction to be worth $1,500 if you're using the simplified method or even more depending on the size of your home office and whether or not you choose to take the regular method calculation. Number three is the student loan interest deduction. About 43 and a half million people in the United States have student loan debt. So if you have student loan debt, then you need to be aware of this deduction because it is really helpful. The student loan interest deduction allows you to deduct up to a maximum of $2,500 in student loan interest paid from your taxable income. So for example, let's say that you had taxable income of $50,000 and that you paid $5,000 in student loan interest. In this case, you would be able to deduct $2,500 as a maximum from your taxable income. This would reduce your taxable income to $47,500, which means that you just reduced your taxes by nearly 5%, which would give you some nice tax savings. Now, Number four is maxing out your 401k or your IRA. If you max out retirement accounts, such as a traditional 401k or a traditional IRA, then this can reduce your taxable income as well. This is because these accounts are funded with pre-tax dollars, which means that the money goes into the accounts before they are taxed. So once you contribute to them, your 401k or your IRA, your overall taxable income is subtracted from these contribution amounts. Now for 2023, the contribution limits for employer sponsored 401ks is 22,500 or 30,000 if you're age 50 or older. The contribution limit for traditional IRAs is 6,500 or $7,500 if you are age 50 or older. But keep in mind that contributing to Roth 401ks or Roth IRAs is not gonna boost your tax refund. Only contributing to traditional 401ks and IRAs will. And this is because contributing to Roth 401ks and IRAs are made with post 
tax dollars. So they do not reduce your taxable income for the year. However, Roth 401ks and IRAs provide tax benefits later on when you withdraw during your retirement. This is because you can withdraw this money tax-free. Now, number five is charitable contributions. Did you make charitable contributions this year? Well, if you did, then you'll most likely be able to deduct them. Charitable contributions to qualifying institutions are tax deductible to taxpayers who itemize their deductions up to a certain limit. Currently, this limit is 60% of a person's adjusted gross income for cash. So if you're someone who is donating to charities or to churches on a regular basis, then these donations could potentially help you to increase your tax refund. Just remember, if you're going to deduct charitable contributions, make sure that you keep your receipts just in case the IRS decides to audit you. Now, number six is maxing out your HSA. If you have never heard of an HSA before, I want you to listen. It stands for Health Savings Account. With an HSA, it is very similar to a 401k. Instead of helping you fund your retirement, it helps you fund your qualifying medical expenses for later on in life. But just like a traditional 401k, you can make contributions to an HSA on a pre-tax basis. This means that your taxable income for the year will be reduced by the amount of money you contribute to the HSA. However, just like with a 401k or an IRA, there are limits to the HSA. And currently, the limits for contributing to an HSA are $3,850 if you have health coverage just for yourself, and then $7,750 if you have health coverage for your family. Now, number seven, is the child tax credit. Do you have children? And if so, then you might be eligible to take the child tax credit. You see, the child tax credit is a tax credit that is worth up to $2,000 per qualifying dependent under the age of 17. Currently, 1,600 of this tax credit is also refundable, meaning that if you don't owe any taxes at the end of the year, you're getting a government check for $1,600. It is important to note that not everyone with a dependent child is able to claim this credit. For example, there are income limits to claiming the tax credit. This credit starts to phase out when your income exceeds $400,000 for married couples, $200,000 for single filers. But if you do qualify for this tax credit, then it can be quite helpful. In most cases, many taxpayers end up resulting in a refund by claiming their children. Number eight is the lifetime learning credit. The lifetime learning credit is another handy tax credit that can help to lower your tax bill. With the lifetime learning credit, it is a tax credit worth up to $2,000 that both students and parents of students enrolled in post-secondary education programs are eligible for. This can include college, grad school, and many more. To qualify for the lifetime learning credit, the student must be enrolled in an institution that the IRS considers to be eligible, and this tax credit is non-refundable. Also, it is not available for people who have incomes over $90,000 or $180,000 if you're a joint filer. The nice thing about this credit is that there's no limit to the number of years you can use it as long as you're enrolled in some type of qualifying program at a qualifying institution. Number nine is the child and dependent care credit. The child and dependent care credit is another great tax credit that is available for people who have children or other qualifying dependents. Unlike the child tax credit, the child and dependent care credit is a tax credit that is specifically designed to help cover some of the cost of child care expenses like daycare or other child care dependent activities that you're spending your money on. This tax credit can be extremely beneficial for parents who work regularly instead of staying home full time to take care of their kids. Like the child tax credit, this tax credit can also be worth up to a few thousand dollars depending on how many children or other qualifying dependents that you're taking care of. Families with one child or dependents can claim 20 to 35% of up to $3,000 in qualifying child or dependent care expenses. And families with two or more children or dependents can claim 20 to 35% up to the 6,000 of child or dependent care expenses. This is just important to note if you're gonna be wanting to maximize your tax refund. Last but not least is number 10 medical expense deductions. Now, hopefully you didn't have a lot of medical expenses this year, God forbid, but if you did, you might be able to get significant deductions for qualifying medical expenses. The IRS allows you to deduct unreimbursed medical expenses for things like preventative treatments, surgeries, dental treatments, vision care, and much more. However, you will only be able to deduct your unreimbursed medical care costs that exceed 7.5% of your adjusted gross income. So 
So for example, if you're making $100,000 this year, 7.5% is $7,500. So anything that exceeds this $7,500 is what you actually get to deduct in medical expenses on your tax return. Hopefully that makes sense. We have just about reached the end of this video, so well done making it this far. I know that that was a lot of information given to you quickly. Now, although all these tax tips can potentially help you get a larger refund, I also just wanna stress that you should definitely speak to a tax professional, if possible, to get advice on your specific situation. And this is because some of these tips might be more beneficial to you, and some of them might not be beneficial to you depending on your situation. With that being said, here's what I want you to walk away with. Number one, Tax credits and deductions can potentially help you get a larger tax refund by reducing your taxable income or taxes you owe. Some of the best tax deductions are the mortgage interest deduction, the student loan interest deduction, the home office deduction, and of course, medical expense deductions. Some of the best tax credits are the child tax credit, the lifetime learning credit, and the child and dependent care credit. And finally, maxing out your 401k and your IRA, making contributions to these accounts can dramatically reduce your tax bill and those funds can be used later for additional investing. If you have any questions about these tax credits, your tax deductions, or boosting your tax refund, you can feel free to get in touch with my company by clicking on the link below in the description and qualifying for a consultation. Also, I mentioned earlier, don't don't forget to sign up for the Tax-Free Wealth Challenge to get access to some of the most powerful tax saving strategies and opportunities to speak with me directly. You can also find a link in the description to get in touch with my real estate tax team if you need any real estate tax advice. Finally, I also added a link to the Tax Alchemy course in the description where I teach you how to save a fortune in taxes using the same strategies favored by the wealthiest 1% of Americans. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Cheers.